Whether it's the shack or the pack, the moon, the suns, or the stars, get into the real things, the authentic stuff. Get into Sports Illustrated Insider Authentics, the catalog that gets you into the game for real. Insider Authentics takes you into the locker room to suit up like the pros. Whatever your team, college or pro, you'll get issued what they get issued. It's exactly what the players and coaches wear with NFL Pro Line, Major League Baseball's Diamond Collection, NBA Authentics, and the NHL Center Collection. Insider Authentics gives you all the big names in the big games. Apex, Champion, Starter, Russell, and others. They feature the same fabrics, cuts, and logos used by the professional and college teams. Sweatshirts, t-shirts, shorts, and jerseys that can take a pounding and still look like a hero. It's quality that's unbeatable. It's Sports Illustrated Insider Authentics. Call this toll-free number now to get into it with a free catalog. It's where you find all the stuff that's hard to find. It's where you can get into it all without going out. And you get it all on time with express delivery that won't keep you waiting. Plus, you can order the sports videos that capture the excitement of the event, the teams, the stars. You'll also get inside the world of sports celebrities through signed helmets, balls, and covers. These items are limited, so call now for a free catalog. Ask how you can join the Insiders Club and save 10% on all purchases. Plus, you'll receive two free videos. Watch for Insiders Authentics ads in Sports Illustrated. Get inside with royalty, the mighty, the biggest, and the best. It's great stuff. Call for a free catalog and get inside with Sports Illustrated Insider Authentics. Hi, I'm Peter King of Sports Illustrated. Along with my colleague Michael Silver, it's my pleasure to introduce the 1995 Detroit Lions Video Yearbook. In this Sports Illustrated special presentation, we're going to give you an exclusive look at Detroit Lions football, past, present, and future. And we're going to start with a review of the 1994 Lions season, a highlight package we call the team that never quit. And Michael, a lot of eyebrows around the league being raised after the season when Wayne Fonts, the head coach of the Lions, got a contract extension. He hadn't brought them very far into the playoffs in recent years, but he did do one thing in the offseason. He revamped this defense. Gone are Kelvin Pritchett and Pat Swilling. In is a very, very good defensive tackle in the NFL in recent years, Henry Thomas, who also has his defensive line coach from Minnesota, John Tierlink, in to run the defense now. What do you think of their offense coming into 1995? Peter, it all comes down to Scott Mitchell. Let's face it, they brought him in for big bucks from Miami last season. He was sort of a disappointment. Never really got going, injured his hand, was out for the year. Dave Craig was there to bail him out. Now Craig's not around. Mitchell's going to have to get it done. Sure doesn't hurt to have Barry Sanders on your team, though. Mike, obviously Barry Sanders, I think, is the best football player I've ever seen. Look at what happened to him last season gets caught behind the line of scrimmage, tackled for loss more than 50 times, still averages more than five yards a carry. So in other words, if you're not nailing him behind the line of scrimmage, he's got five, six, seven, eight yards every time. The guy is truly an amazing player. These are just some of the things we're about to see. For in addition to 1994 highlights, we've also got a preview of the 1995 Lions season, as well as a special trip down memory lane in our Lions Classic segment. That segment will feature a look back at a Detroit Lion tradition, Thanksgiving Day football. We'll relive some of the most memorable Thanksgiving Day games. So without further ado, Sports Illustrated proudly presents the 1995 Detroit Lions Video Yearbook. As the NFC Central Division champions prepared to defend their title, there were questions that needed answers. Would the Lions soar in 94? to the NFC Championship game and beyond? And would free agent quarterback Scott Mitchell live up to his lofty expectations? Well, the answer to that one was heard loud and clear on opening day when number 19 made his Lions debut a memorable one. Other questions. Would Herman Moore step up to become one of the elite wide receivers in the NFL? He was well on his way. And would Barry Sanders just be Barry? Well, number 20 served notice that his would be a season to remember. 
But Scott Mitchell had the most to prove, that he was the kind of quarterback who could shake off a sluggish first half and bring the Lions from behind to win. Fires, caught, touchdown, Anthony Carter! 28-21 Atlanta, 36 seconds to go. That he was the kind of quarterback who could stand in the thick of the swarming Falcon defense and hit Anthony Carter for the tying touchdown. Now fires, caught, touchdown, Lions, Anthony Carter! Holy mackerel! On his OT sound on the opening day. They were the team that never quit. And the comeback win marked the beginning of a season to remember, not so much for what the Lions accomplished, but for what they overcame. Hanson's kick is on its way. It's good. The Lions win it in overtime. 31 to 28. Jason Hanson wins it for the Lions in the season opener. Wow. The Lions' first national exposure came on a Monday night in Dallas. Cowboys coach Barry Switzer hadn't seen Barry Sanders since his college days at Oklahoma. And when the Lions donned their throwback uniforms for the first time, Switzer soon found out that when Barry ran the ball, it was like a flashback to those college days. In a shootout with Cowboys running back Emmett Smith, Barry proved he was second to none by running for 194 yards, the most ever by a visitor to Texas Stadium. Mitchell, play fake, looking to throw. Time, into the end zone, wide open, touchdown, Lions! Brett Perriman. Mitchell under center. Mitchell to throw, Mitchell caught, touchdown, Lions, Herman Moore! What a great throw by Scott Mitchell again. The Lions forged a 17-3 lead, but the defending Super Bowl champions stormed back to tie. The Lions' defense, however, was toughest when it counted most. They responded with goal line stands that denied the Cowboys the scoring opportunities they needed to win. Lions defenders held fast in overtime as well. After forcing a third Dallas turnover, the Lions took over at the Cowboys' 43-yard line. Scott Mitchell's clutch passing put the Lions in position to win their second overtime game of the year and earn their first ever win at Texas Stadium. Can the Lions win it in overtime? We're about to find out. Young Jason Hansen. Rotenhauser, good snap, kick on its way. Jason Hansen. Lions win it! Lions win it! They've beaten the Dallas Cowboys for the first time ever at Texas Stadium. It would be four weeks before the Lions would win again. But this was the team that never quit. They never lost their never say die attitude. And that made the difference in week eight against the Chicago Bears. Dan Owens, Robert Porche, Chris Spielman, Mike Johnson, Benny Blades, and the rest of the Detroit defense went after the Bears with a vengeance. While the Chicago defense could only try to keep up with Barry Sanders. He's off to the races, 20, it's a sprint, 30, 40, carry to midfield. They did catch up eventually, 84 yards later. On the angle at the 20, Donnell Wolper. After a Brett Perriman touchdown, the defense took charge. Spearheaded by all-pro linebacker Chris Spielman. Caught Getty, the tight end, but he is oh, stolen. Level, stolen by Spielman. 10, 5, touchdown, Lions, Chris Spielman steals it from Chris Getty and takes it in for the touchdown. The offense, defense, and special teams all scored touchdowns, but the special teams scored theirs in record-setting fashion. A yard deep, they'll come out to the 10, but the field 15, 20, he's got a seam, 30, 35, Mel, up to the races, far side. On this day, Mel Gray claimed the all-time NFL record for kickoff return yards. He's gone, touchdown, Lions! And his career-long run proved to be the difference in the 21-16 win. The Lions had never won a game at Giants Stadium. On October 30th, 1994, that dubious streak came to an end. Despite three turnovers, the team that never quit 
never allowed themselves to be counted out. Pressure up the middle. Mitchell fires to the end zone. Herman Moore up. Touchdown, Lions. Herman Moore saw the football, adjusted back to it. At Transplanted Lions fans got a close-up look at Herman Moore and at a new addition to the Lions defense, Mike Johnson, number 59, who made his mark at outside linebacker. Short drop right, slant in, picked off by Mike Johnson, back to the 40, he's got a picket line to the 30. To the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the 5, touchdown Lions! Mike Johnson intercepts and goes back 50 yards for the touchdown. When the Lions weren't getting big plays from Mike Johnson, they turned to Barry Sanders, whose 146 yards put him over the 1,000 mark for the sixth straight season. Only two other runners in history can make that claim. Breaks a tackle to the outside, 35, he's to the 40, 45, 50, Harry Lord, he's on a streak, they'll never get him, 20, 15, 10, all they do it from behind. The 62-yard run led to a predictable reaction from the opposite sideline and a second Herman Moore touchdown. In overtime, Moore's second effort paid a huge dividend and set the stage for still another overtime game-winning field goal. 20, 15, Moore to the 10, and inside of the eight-yard line. I thought he was down. I did too. 25-yard field goal, Jason Hansen to win it for the Lions. The snap is good, placement is good, the kick is good, and the Lions win it. With that kick, the team that never quit set an NFL record by becoming the only team ever to record three overtime wins in one season. It would be Scott Mitchell's last complete game of 1994. The following week, he broke his hand in Green Bay and was out for the season. But this Lions team never lost its competitive edge. Of course, with Barry Sanders in your backfield, you've always got a hole card. And he's an ace, the most dangerous runner in the NFL. I pretty much approach each game the same. I realize that I'm an important part of our offensive attack, and every time I get the ball, I'm going to try to make something happen. I don't think people expect anything out of me that I don't expect personally, because I, you know, I I demand um, a lot, and I expect to go out and make big plays. I know that the coaches are going to call my number, and so um, I just have to basically be ready when uh, given the opportunity. 35, breaks through 30, Barry outside of the 20, cuts inside of the 15. Barry Sanders turned around a defensive back about three times. Wow, that defensive back was not blocked. And Barry just cut inside, cut outside, cut inside. The defensive back could never set his feet to get a shot at Barry. He just kept turning back and forth and then used his speed to outrun a man to the end zone. What an incredible run by the best back in the National Football League. The Lion King. No one is harder to catch, harder to corner, or tougher to bring down. In 1994, Barry Sanders ran for 1,883 yards, the fourth highest total in league history. And he became one of only two men ever to gain 1,000 yards in each of his first six seasons. His wizardry constantly confounds NFL defenses. They might stop him once or twice, but sooner or later, it's see ya later. Mitchell down the line to Barry, cuts it back over the middle, 35-30, explodes to the 25, breaks the tackle to the 20, he'll Go take on. it, here's the touchdown line. Incredibly, Sanders finished the regular season with a string of 732 consecutive attempts, both rushing and receiving, without a turnover. A streak that dates back to 1992. It's not like I have a a set plan in mind as to what I'm going to do because for the most part I think everything that offenses do is pretty much um, reactionary and uh, it's all predicated upon what defenses are doing. So far whatever defenses have been doing has not gotten it done for any number of reasons. Even Barry's supposed lack of size is an advantage in itself. I think it just comes from uh, being uh, a little bit smaller and um, not having that privilege of just running through people, bowling over people, you know, so you try to run around them. 
I think because guys react so fast on defense, there's not a lot of time to do anything but hit the hole and try to get positive yards. And so I think whatever you do, you have to do it quickly. Sanders' sequel of outstanding runs continued in Week 11 in a 14-9 win over Tampa Bay. With 237 yards, Barry broke his own team mark and became the first player in NFL history to run for 200 yards in one half. Barry now holds or shares 15 Lions offensive records. 69-yard gallop by Barry Sanders. And that's what Hardy Nickerson talked about. You stop him, you stop him, you stop him, and then see you later. By late November, time was tight. The Lions were 5-6. and six. The playoffs were still in their plans. In the Lions' year of the fan, a sold-out Thanksgiving Day game against the Buffalo Bills was just the time to begin a playoff run. Craig, deep hand off to Barry, cuts right, flip back off, blue flicker, Dave Craig's got Herman Moore wide open, got a touchdown! Number 84 rolled up a career-high 169 yards on seven catches. The Lions' offense kicked into high gear as linemen Lomas Brown, Sean Bowens, Kevin Glover, Doug Widell, and David Lutz provided running lanes for Barry Sanders. Takes it in. Touchdown, Lions. Rolls left, fires wide open. This will be a touchdown to Aubrey Matthews. Matthews wide open at the six-yard line. The route was officially on. Seven different Lions receivers caught passes. Good for 351 yards, the fifth highest total in team history. <laughs> To put it up, blitz on, he reads it, goes to the corner of the end zone, touchdown, Lions, Brett Perriman. Buffalo's attempts to get back in the game were shut down by a defense whose game plan was to mix it up. Two deep, three deep, blitz, man coverage, and to attack from all angles. Kelly for the gun, fires out of the flat, intercepted, Willie Clay will score, touchdown, Lions, Willie Clay intercepted and takes it in for the touchdown. The 35-21 win lifted the Lions to 6-6 six six with four games to go. The stretch run had begun, and the Lions had the horses to stay in the race. The Lions' offense boasts a balanced group of receivers anchored by Herman Moore, who has combined physical toughness with finesse to become only the seventh receiver in team history to go over the 1,000-yard mark. Moore's 1,173 yards were the second highest, and his 72 catches were the most ever by a line receiver. Fourth down, Moore up and grabs it and takes it in! In the process, he earned his first Pro Bowl berth. In his fourth year as a Lions starter, Brett Perriman continued to flourish and was second to Moore with 56 catches, good for 761 yards and four touchdowns. And Aubrey Matthews became a valuable clutch performer after Anthony Carter went out with an injury in week two. He is the ultimate role player who stresses quality over quantity. Of his 20 catches, 14 were for first downs and two others for touchdowns. 
And with 1994 first round pick Johnny Morton waiting in the wings, Scott Mitchell will have plenty of quality targets in 1995. Somehow, some way, Wayne Fonts always gets it done in December. And 1994 was no different. Another wild one was in the works against arch rival Green Bay. Not at all unusual in the NFC Central, the most competitive division in the NFL. Twice in the second quarter, the team that never quit rallied to regain the lead. And they did it with traditional methods, as well as the not-so-traditional. Touchdown to Scott Cottle! <laughs> How about that? A look at yard the, pass. Look at the offensive line. Oh, baby. The offensive linemen are all over there absolutely mobbing Scott Cottle. Three wide receivers in the game. All out blitz. Far reads it. Oh, no. Wide open Anthony Morgan. He's oh, no. It's right. After the Packers stunned them with a 47-yard touchdown to jump in front, the Lions would have to come from behind yet again. And the team that never quit did just that. First with a Jason Hansen field goal. Then with another game-breaker from their setup man. Barry up the middle, heads to the outside, 25, breaks a tackle, 30, he's off to the races! 63 yards later, Sanders had set the table for another comeback win. Second down, goal to go. The game-winning touchdown capped the 34-31 thriller and was the Lions' ticket to continue their playoff run that hinged on the final three games. Whenever you make a call to the Lions' defense, one man always answers. Four-time All-Pro linebacker Chris Spielman at six feet, 247 pounds, he is not the prototypical linebacker in terms of size and pure athleticism. But few of his peers play with his desire and consistency. For an unprecedented six straight seasons, Spielman has led the Lions in tackles, including a team record 195 in 94. Number 54 is a classic overachiever who has elevated himself to the upper crust of NFL linebackers. Mike Johnson, number 59, teamed with Spielman to form one of the league's elite middle linebacker tandems and was second on the team in tackles. Dan Owens and Robert Porsche lead the returning linemen. And key free agent acquisition Henry Thomas, along with number one draft pick Luther Ellis, will give the Lions their best defensive front in years. Also new to the Lions defense is John Tierlink, who was hired to install a more aggressive pass rush. That approach is sure to benefit defensive backs Willie Clay, number 32. Third year man Ryan McNeil, number 47 along with veterans Robert Massey, number 40, and Benny Blades, number 36. In their best defensive game of the year, the Lions whipped the New York Jets before meeting the Vikings in their most critical matchup of 1994. It's a capacity crowd at the Pontiac Silverdome with the NFC Central Division on the line. The Minnesota Vikings can claim the Central Division title with a victory here, but the Detroit Lions can keep their division hopes alive, a third division title in four years with a victory here this afternoon. So the matchup is huge, the Lions and the Minnesota Vikings. And he gets a good foot into this one. Mel Gray will have to back up at about the two-yard line. Bell comes out to the 10, to the 15, to the 20, to the 30, to the 35, to the 40. He's off to the races, only Romain. 40, 35, 30, now to the 25, to the 20. Bell leaves to the 10 Touchdown, Bell Gray. In a stunning reversal of fortune, the Lions handed out everything they had taken in a 10-3 loss to the Vikings in Week 2, and a lot more.
Rookie wide receiver Johnny Morton's first NFL touchdown earned the Lions a 10-point lead they would never relinquish. Detroit's offensive line, working in tandem for the 15th straight game, did not allow a sack and cleared some major lanes for Barry Sanders. Barry's got room to the outside, stiff arm to the 15, to the 10, Duke move to the 5, Barry nice. touchdown Lions! Barry Sanders takes it in, his sixth rushing touchdown of the year. The Lions extended their lead with three touchdowns in less than 17 minutes in the second half. In October, the Lions were the longest of long shots to make the playoffs. But the team that never quit beat the odds to post their first back-to-back -back winning seasons in more than 20 years. And the Lions qualified for the playoffs for the third time in four years. That for the first time since the 1950s. Next season, upgrades through the draft and free agency figured to position the Lions for a shot at the NFC title. Along with the addition of a key man in the front office, new vice chairman Bill Ford Jr., who will assist his father in the operation of the team. I grew up with the team, uh, really since I was born. I uh, can remember going to Lions games. My parents used to wrap me up in a blanket and take me to Tiger Stadium. So it's a new official role for me, uh, but it's not, a, it's not a new experience. The Lions have always been my father's great love, and the one thing that's probably the big disappointment in his life is that we haven't made it to the big dance, and I'm here to try and help him realize that dream. As time has gone on, I think he's felt that uh, there were a lot of aspects of the team that he really wasn't personally getting involved with anymore, and he asked me if I would, and so I am, and my goal is to build the, the best organization that, in the NFL. I want all the other organizations to look at the Lions as the benchmark. Clearly we've got to have the product on the field and I think the pieces are in place. I, I feel very good about the personnel we've got. We now just have to put it all together. I think if we do that, we will capture the imagination of the public. But it's more than the, than the on the field product. It's the whole organization. You've got to drive excellence through the whole organization and we're going to do that. From the front office to the field and into the community, the Detroit Lions commitment to winning and to the state of Michigan is stronger than ever. And like the team that never quit, that commitment will never waver. I think that the Lions have been so close and so on the cusp that Wayne has convinced people in Detroit that you can't throw away what we've been building. I think that he's really stamped this totally as his team, his organization. So this is an important year from the standpoint that pretty much everything is in place that Wayne has asked for and now he'll see, we'll see how they do. The key thing is going to be the performance of Scott Mitchell. If Scott Mitchell doesn't play real solid football and makes a lot of the mistakes he made before he got hurt last year and missed the rest of the season then this is a nine-win team because I think that they're so reliant on Mitchell and they've spent so much money in the passing game uh, that even though Barry Sanders had a, you know, a galactic year last year, that they still find themselves relying on an awful lot on their quarterback to take them to that next level. I think Mitchell, in his optimum performance, certainly can do that. He certainly didn't show it last year, and he's going to have an awful lot to prove this year. There's not a whole lot left for Barry Sanders to prove. Still, in his sixth NFL season, number 20 did things even he hadn't done before. Sanders chased the elusive 2,000-yard barrier into the final week of the season, and his value to the team was such that the mere threat of him running the football gave defense his fits. I think just in terms of value, if we're talking about the most valuable player in the National Football League, it has to be Barry Sanders. Barry Sanders just has put this team on the map, period. 
just because this is a team that is a playoff contender and a playoff team even though every other aspect of its offense and many aspects of its defense are highly questionable. One area that is not suspect is the Lions kicking game. Despite a somewhat subpar season in 94, Jason Hansen remains one of the top young kickers in the league. Punter Greg Montgomery earned Pro Bowl status in 1994 as he moved into eighth place on the NFL's all-time punting list upping his career average to 43.7 yards. Special teams have always been a source of pride for the Detroit Lions. And while plenty of familiar faces will return to the coverage unit in 1995, there will be someone missing on the return side. After breaking every meaningful return mark in the NFL, Mel Gray moved on to Houston. Again, Mel Gray not back there. He is uh, said his knee has acted up on him again and not sure whether he's going to return. So Johnny Morton is back deep. And his replacement will be second year man Johnny Morton, who got his feet wet in the final week of the regular season. To the near side, 35. Morton down the sideline, 54. And proved that he was more than capable of filling the shoes of Mel Gray. Johnny Morton has just taken it for the touchdown. I don't see any flags. Johnny Morton with the 92-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. How about that? Despite adding new coaches and players almost every year for the past six seasons, the Detroit defense has shown little, if any, improvement. In a perfect world, you'd like all of your defenders to play with the intensity and consistency of a Chris Spielman. Of course, that'll never happen. So more changes are in order for 1995. And the one area that needs the most attention is the secondary. I think the corners have really hurt him over the years. I, I find it remarkable that a team could allow 68% pass completions. I mean, two out of every three times a quarterback goes back to pass last year against the Lions, he completes the pass and they still make the playoffs. To me, that's incredible. The Lions have to improve on defense if they're gonna break out from that four-team pack in the NFC Central and actually become a decisive division champion. They tried to make some moves over the offseason. They brought in John Tierling from Minnesota to run the defense. That could be an improvement. They also signed Henry Thomas. Maybe we can duke in there and tell him to run somebody over next year. If you're going to bring a guy over from Minnesota, you might as well have him take one of the best inside pass rushers and run stoppers in the game. Defensive tackle extraordinaire Henry Thomas is coming off his third straight trip to the Pro Bowl to join the Lions in the prime of his professional career. To better get to know number 97, and to fully appreciate the demands of his position, here's a little insight on Life on the Line with Henry Thomas. Nothing like this job, nothing like this job. It's our day, it's our day. We gotta have a big one up front. Oh, I'm trying to stay back, just like, you know, you guys put that rule in just for me. I'm trying to stay <laughs> off the ball, you know. We didn't put it in for you. Uh, we didn't put it in for you. Now, you know that. Nobody else offsides, but Hank is. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it called the Henry Thomas rule? No. Oh, I thought y'all no. named it Henry Thomas no. rule. Officials, you got to love them. Well, you don't got to love them. 185. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, don't play like me. You can't have a good play and a bad play. We got to just keep going. Good play, good play, good play. Damn. I'm a better player than that. I'm a better player than that. Hey, next time we run it, run with me. If they bail, we run together. When we make contact, you come around. We got to cause more confusion. It was on me. <sighs> Hello! Get in the hell! Well, hey, don't sleepwalk anymore the rest of this ball game. Let's come out here and take care of business, man. If they catch it, let's hit them. <laughs> Oh, 
Not today. Not today. On the boot, Hella tried to hit me. Yeah. I, I saw him coming and I turned on him. Boom! Yeah. I was like, not today. We in there? Let's dance. I think the one thing the Lions have to have to be a legitimate Super Bowl contender and to win this division is to get 62% completion year out of Scott Mitchell with 21 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, to play the type of mistake-free, non-turnover quarterback that, that they need to have. Combine that with Barry Sanders, you know, who knows? I don't think it's realistic to go into the season equating the Detroit Lions with a Super Bowl team, especially in the NFC where Dallas and San Francisco remain so strong. On the other hand, if those two teams falter, anything can happen. I think they've shown, especially if they get consistent quarterback play, they can win 12 games. I think their defense is solid enough. They've strengthened it up the middle. Uh, this year it's not a great defense, but if Henry Thomas has an optimum year and the corners and safeties have a more impactful year, I think they've got a chance to be a double-digit win team and be playing in January. While millions of Americans digested Thanksgiving turkey, the Lions also found success easy to swallow. Detroit danced to a Motown beat, but O.J. Simpson composed a fancy production number of his own. With Simpson showing the way, soon everybody was trying. Greg Landry didn't match Simpson, but his efforts did help take apart the Bills by land and through the air, outpointing them 27 to 14 in a memorable game in Pontiac. Victory was sweet this Thanksgiving afternoon and savored by all, especially number 11, Greg Landry, whose 1976 comeback finally silenced those who doubted his chances of returning after three injury-plagued seasons. Victory has been an elusive commodity for Forrest Gregg and the Green Bay Packers. But on Thanksgiving Day, a blocked punt by number 97, Tim Harris, helped propel the pack to their third win. But for most of the game, Green Bay saw the Detroit Lions riddle their young defense. When rookie Gary James, number 32, leveled a blitzing linebacker, Jimmy Giles picked up an easy Lion touchdown. But it was an obscure second-year receiver for Green Bay that commanded center stage. Number 87, Walter Stanley, replaced injured Philip Epps and caught four passes for 124 yards and two touchdowns. The effervescent Stanley created the kind of enchanting exotic choreography that would have got him slammed dance to the bench permanently by Vince Lombardi. 
Fortunately, in these more permissive times, Stanley was still around as the Packers trailed 40 to 37 with 41 seconds left in the game. The 83-yard touchdown by the Stanley Steamer produced a dramatic 44-40 Green Bay victory. But the ghosts of the glory years would have shuddered at these new wave celebrations. On Thanksgiving Day in Detroit, the Lions anticipated a hearty feast, compliments of the last place Chicago Bears. Billy Sims, number 20, wasted no time supplying the first course as he turned a simple screen pass into a gourmet meal. The 47-yard score helped give the Lions a 17-3 third-quarter lead, at which point, having overeaten, they took refuge on the living room couch. This gave the Bears a chance to serve up some favorite dishes of their own, like Walter Payton, number 34. Peyton's efforts initiated a dramatic fourth quarter comeback that climaxed with Vince Evans' touchdown with no time left on the clock. Evans' run tied the score at 17 and sent the game into overtime. Detroit lost the coin toss and kicked off to start the overtime period. Within a matter of seconds, the unsuspecting Lions died the most sudden of deaths, as Dave Williams, number 22, raced virtually untouched, 95 yards for the game-winning touchdown. The defeat weakened Detroit's already shaky hold on first place in the NFC Central Division while the Bears, realistically out of the playoff picture, simply enjoyed their Thanksgiving Day devouring of the Lions. Green Bay coach Forrest Gregg sported a grim pregame facade as he sent his troops into Detroit for an intra-division battle Thanksgiving Day. On the Packers' third play from scrimmage, number 31, fullback Gary Ellis encountered scant resistance on a tackle-free 40-yard romp around left end. On Green Bay's next offensive series, quarterback Lynn Dickey found tight end Paul Kaufman running free and clear in the middle and hit him in stride with a 44-yard scoring strike. Just when it appeared the Lions would be blown out of the Silverdome, Detroit coach Monty Clark dished out a verbal holiday feast to his team, replete with all the trimmings. It appeared to inspire the silver and blue to greater heights. This clutch catch by Mark Nichols was one of four totaling 108 yards for the receiver. But Nichols' most spectacular reception was also the play of the game. With 13 seconds left in the first half, Clark sent third string quarterback Mike Maturik into the game for one play. A Hail Mary pass thrown into a flood right formation. Nichols somehow came down with the ball, and the catch led to a field goal that eventually proved to be the margin of victory. The Lions were sparked by Gary Danielson's 305 yards and three touchdowns. Two of them caught by tight end David Lewis, number 87, as Detroit dominated the rest of this nationally televised game, controlling the football for a whopping 45 minutes. In 
In the end, the previously unlucky, unheralded, and for the most part unappreciated Detroit Lions delivered a nearly fatal punch to the Packers' fast-fading playoff hope.